Hey guys, Joe Cool here. Welcome back to a tutorial. You asked for it, you got it. You see that in the background? What's that over there? Yep, I updated it for use with a turtle. So once the um, the trees grow, All the pretty colors, all the pretty colors. It's a lot of colors. There she goes. <laughs> so every time it kicks off, it'll go. So um, how this works, so it's waiting for um, an inventory change. So when the tree grows, these um, terrain smashers will break the dirt here and send it up to the turtle. The turtle detects that the inventory has changed. And then what it does is it sees how much fuel it needs. If it's, um, it moves 16 spaces, so you need 16 units of f fuel, charcoal gives 80. Um, so if it needs more fuel, it'll grab a, a piece of coal and it will use it. And then it grabs four saplings from the um, filing cabinet and plants the dirt, plants the saplings, and comes back to center. Uh, and now for fuel to keep a constant supply of fuel so that um, there's always fuel in here and it gets renewed on its own I added a furnace now the furnace uh, it's a redstone furnace that's just connected up to the tesseract um, as you can see here the wood gets ejected out the back of the harvester and this is a dense setting so you can use your wrench to set it to either dense vacuum or normal dense means that this is the furthest spot um, furthest inventory spot everything past this dense point is further than anything else in here so even if it's seen this as closer it would still be considered further uh, because it, it was dense and so when it kicks off it'll set a um, it'll fill it up with a stack of wood basically and then the wood gets sent up to the chest. Once the chest is full, the furnace will fill up, and then the um, both slots of the furnace will fill up, and then it just won't make any more. It'll just make one every now and again. But that keeps fuel constantly supplied. Now, the biggest challenge is that um, you cannot sort rainbow saplings with thermal expansion uh, servos. So normally you can um, sense my bell. So in here, you can whitelist um, items, and trying to whitelist a rainbow sapling won't um, it won't actually sort it. It'll sort everything else, all the other dyes that come out of it, but it won't sort uh, the rainbow sapling. So what I did is I used a filing cabinet. Now a filing cabinet can only accept items of the same type, being that the rainbow sapling is the only thing that's like itself. No other items will end up in here. So the servo on thermal expansion says, hey, I can put a sapling in here because there's already saplings in there. Uh, but I can't put anything else in there. So then, um, so as you see here, I've got this set to dense also which means that it will try to put stuff in the filing cabinet before it puts stuff in the tesseract. And the tesseract is just hooked up to an inventory and a power generation. So this is how I would typically set up my farms and that um, so that would work there. Um, and then the script just comes out, sets it all up, and then sends it back. Now the other thing to, I did was Within the script, um, it defines which is coal and which is um, 
the sapling container based on the type of container it is. So this is a container chest and this is an extra utilities filing cabinet. Um, so that's how those two are defined so that it'll search all the sides and it says okay I found a chest there should be coal in the chest whenever I need fuel I can just pull coal out of there and then um, with the filing cabinet he knows that filing cabinets only gonna have saplings in it and so it pulls saplings out of there and then the dirt comes from the bottom and fills it up and as you see right now there's nothing in it so it, it keeps things pretty clean so let's go ahead and kick on with the tutorial what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to build this and get the um, script I paste bend it so um, you can easily download it and um, and then the second portion of this I'll go over all the code that way those that just want to build it and grab the script then kick it off and those that are interested in the mechanics of the code I can go over the code and the people that don't want to listen to the code they can just move on so with this you need a 10 by 10 and then at your entrance you need a 4x3 and the reason you need a 4x3 so right here is where dirt's gonna fill in and then here's where we're gonna put our terrain smashers now we shouldn't need to set these as um, ignoring redstone but I like to do it to keep it clean and make sure things are going as they should be um, now we need a an item duct so as you can see it kicked off as you heard you heard it going off <laughs> and dude should be kicking off here any second um, I have this set on a it sleeps for 15 seconds now the reason I did that is to allow everything to decay before going in and starting messing with stuff so it gives time for the harvester to harvest everything before things go chaotic. Um, so back to here. So we need item ducts coming out of here and each one of these needs to be set as an output. And then on the, so facing inside the um, filing cabinet's going to go on this row here. The turtle's going to go on this row. So um, this is the third one from the side so go ahead and bring this up to level with here and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get a cover and put it right there now you can use whatever color cover you want based on your theme but I'm using that it's just something I grabbed it was the easiest to grab so don't don't sweat it okay so the next thing we want to grab is the vacuum hopper I'm going to set up this side. Actually, you know what? Let's do um, the Tesseract because there is a lot, lots of stuff is going to feed in the Tesseract. So we want the Tesseract um, right here. So as, as we look here, we're going to have... So this side's not going to have anything on it. It just has the Terrain Smasher there. Most of the stuff is going to be in these three rows. So Tesseract is one um, layer lower on top of that we're going to put the harvester now with the harvester you don't need to add any um, size modifications because the tree will grow within the range of the harvester and it recognizes it as you've seen and it pulls everything down now the harvester is powered so go ahead and set up your harvester for, or your um, tesseract so you want it to send items and receive energy and you're not dealing with fluids so turn that off so we want um, item ducts coming out the back of here and we need to make sure that we set this to, to output um, on the back of this we're going to need the furnace so put your redstone furnace there now in setting up your furnace clear everything out that's a shift um, shift clicking on the center block so if you want to put thing shift clicking on the center block clears everything now the input is going to be the back so you want the back to be blue and then the output's going to be the top so the top's going to be orange and then the next thing you want to do is you want to set that to dense now 
it should be fine the way it is, but I like, you know, like I said, I might like to make things sure and constant and make sure everything goes. Okay, so the next thing we're going to need to set up is we need power for the redstone furnace. So out the bottom of the tesseract, just put some um, power cables. And you look in here, start to power up. And then now, last but not least, um, is our vacuum hoppers. We'll need our item ducts here in a second. Um, so place the so here's your four by four where the tree's gonna grow, and like I showed you before, you're gonna need one. In um, you can eh, well, that's the best corner. I was gonna say you can put it in any corner. You really can put it in any corner, but this is the best corner because here's where the filing cabinet's gonna go. So put it in this corner. Save yourself some trouble. You can design it any way you like later if you want. Now, with the item hopper, these are really neat. So when you open this up, this is based on how you clicked on it. So if, you, if you're if you looking down at it and you right-clicked on it, this is going to be the top. So you see you enabled the top. Now, if I turn off the top, now if I go down here and right-click on it, the face that's facing you is the one that's going to be enabled and that's the one you need to enable so go ahead and add item ducts here and run them back to there okay so um, here you need to set it to dense there you need to set it as an output and then um, you need a servo on here and then you need to set the servo to or you need to set it so it'll pull everything out Actually, that was, yeah. You need to set it so it'll pull constantly out. Um, the next thing you're going to need to do is, if you notice these guys connected, and you don't want them connected. Because that's, uh, i got to fix that one too. Um, fix already. Oh, whatever, we'll put it there. Keep things constant, consistent. Uh, the other thing you may want to use is a um, one of the blocks with a, a hollow block. That's another option. But let's disconnect that. So now we have our three connections. So now we need um, our filing cabinet. Filing cabinet is going to go here, and our chest is going to go there. And then that's pretty much it as far as setting um, all your pieces up. So now you want to fill it in. So pick uh, your decoration block of choice. And then here you want a cover. One of the reasons I picked some of the blocks is so you can easily tell the difference between covers and full blocks. So and then we need a turtle and then with the turtle you want to click on it and you want to label set um, planter okay so you have uh, in order for the turtle to retain its files and data after you um, break it you need to uh, label it so label it whatever you choose I'm labeling it planter it's not a big deal and now what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to get the program so we're gonna uh, so your paste bin uh, get so we want this as your code is 6G. Hope that's a 5. <laughs> B A P J C. It's either a 5 or an S. I guess we'll find out in a second. To start up. Oops. So.
Yep, here it is. Okay. So that was a five. <laughs> so yeah, so here's here's all the code. Fun stuff. And I'll go over that in a minute. Um, but upon oh wait no reset. So reset, there you go. Now um, I added this function here. Now these are the different connections that are on this turtle. So the saved multi-part is the bottom. The container chest is the chest on the left. And the extra utilities filing cabinet is on the right. Now it'll auto detect um, which is which. So based on whichever title this is, um, so if you wanted to point this the other way, you'd have to change the moving around a bit, but otherwise um, the code auto detects which one it is. So if you wanted to go ahead and make sure it's running, so we're going to... Now you need to start off with, oh that's a big thing here, so we needed... Um, so in here, you need five in here. Now the reason for this is the turtle's gonna pull out four, and if there's not five in here, um, it's gonna empty the, if there's less than five, it's gonna empty the um, filing cabinet, and it'll allow dies to enter the filing cabinet, and that's gonna completely mess up your system. So to start off, um, start off with nine, so that's four to plant to start off with, um, four for the turtle to grab, and one more to keep the filing cabinet full. Now I've been using this one a few times here, and yeah, I'm up to 127 rainbows happening, so it's not a big deal. Um, you should get more than four each time. So as you can see, it took a few seconds for it to get some of this wood here, based on where it starts and picks up, and then that'll give the turtle enough time um, it'll, the turtle will wait, the 15 second wait is so that um, yeah there we go I was getting worried there <laughs> it's like I've been doing this for a while now, it should work schnazzy so. So you see the, we're up to eight rainbow dies now, and you can look at some of the other stuff down here. You see all the parts moving through. And then if we look over here, we got coal moving. Oh. Yeah, you're going to want to put a piece of coal in here. Um, I don't know how he kicked off on his own without fuel. So, um, hmm, maybe when you first plant them, they've got, um, they start off with 80. Oh, you know what it was? Oh, that's nice. That works out really well. <laughs> so, here's what happened. The turtle was waiting 15 seconds, right? Well, the harvester had already pulled down some wood, put some wood in the furnace, and the furnace already got one piece before the turtle kicked off. So that worked out really well. I'm happy that worked. Um, that would have been um, frustrating. I've done it before where I've kicked them off, and the guy just basically danced around. But yeah, so there it is. Um, I will put a link to the script in the description. And um, that's all there is. So those that want to hang around for the, the code description, by all means. Um, anyone else, if you just want to grab the code and go, go right ahead. So thanks again for um, checking out this video. If you liked it, please leave a like. And um, thanks a bunch. So, you still there? <laughs> okay, so what we got here, um, let's exit this. 
Uh, start. Oh. Okay, so here's the container. So coal container, I, I used a, a variable. So coal container is container chest. The sapling container is the extra utilities filing cabinet. Um, fuel slot is the slot that it's going to put the fuel in. So when it pulls a piece of coal out, it's going to put it into a specific slot. And we set it for 15, which is this spot right here. Now sapling slot, same difference. When it pulls a sapling out, it's going to put it in this slot. So it will always be in these two slots, no matter what. Um, and then travel distance is the is any time the turtle moves, it uses a, a unit of movement. A coal will give it, a piece of charcoal will give it 80 units of movement. And so if um, if there's less than 16 units, you, you saw me check the fuel level, if there's less than 16 units, it'll pull a piece of coal out, consume it, add it to the fuel, and then move on. Um, dirt quantity is how much dirt you're waiting for. Now, um, while it's running, if you click on these down here, it detects it as an inventory change. So we'll get to that inventory change part of the code, but um, by setting it to four, it's going to go, hey, I detected an inventory change. Are there four pieces of dirt? No, I didn't find four pieces of dirt. Okay, I'm going to wait till the next inventory change So to keep things going. Um, these two variables here, uh, these are the side that the coal and the saplings are on. If it doesn't find either side, it's going to air out and quit. And... Um, so if the chunk gets unloaded while it's in the middle of moving around and it restarts wherever it is, it's going to say, oh, I don't have any containers next to me that contains either a sapling or coal, so I'm just going to shut down. Now, I'm not sure how to define, how to use some comparisons in here, so I just define them as empty and then later on I check to see if they're empty or not. Um, this is an array of directions so there's a piece of code in there that I'm using to output coal or output items from this chest instead of moving the turtle over here and using pick up I used a command from the peripheral to force this chest to output an item a specific direction and um, I just cycle through north south east and west until it finds a place to output it now this allows you to put the farm in any pointing in any direction so um, it, it's not dependent on north south east or west when you run that piece of code it's only going to output to a valid container and the only valid container is going to be the turtle so um, that keeps it from you know it's not going to be direction dependent um, now here we're looking at the, the types of containers on each side. So here we're printing out, this prints it to the terminal, and then we're cycling through all the peripheral names. Now these are going to be left, right, and bottom. And it's saying, um, here we're printing the type that we're, we got. So whatever type was on the left, right, and bottom, and that's where your initial um, code so if we start up so that's this piece right here so it found a saved multi part which is the bottom it found a container chest which is the right and an extra utilities filing cabinet which is the left well vice versa because it's flipped around but um, um, so there and then once it finds the side, so we're we're using the variable coal container to compare against the current type, and then we're assigning the current side, left, right, bottom, to the variable coal side, and that's the same with the sapling side. Now this checks to if the coal side equals empty. If you remember earlier in the code, I specified uh, I defined coal side variable to equal empty, and if it finds the side it should be left or right 
um, it should not be empty. But if it does find it empty, such as if the chunk gets unloaded while it's in the middle of planting or moving around, it's not going to find the um, containers and it will air out. So here's a function um, get container item. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take, uh, it has three inputs, um, which side, which would be left or right, um, the slot, now this is going to be the slot that it puts in the turtle, and how many to put in that slot. So um, the first thing I'm doing is condensing items. So what condense items does is it, all the items that are in the chest it'll move it to the first slot so the first slot will always be full so say I pulled the last items out of the, the slot one in the chest if the items are no longer there but there's still a bunch more coal in the rest of the container it's going to condense it all so as much fits in slot one as there can be and then you can pull stuff out now um, what this um, piece right here does so I'm call, calling um, the function push item and what that does is you specify the side so um, let's see here v, v, v. v should be yeah okay so V is going to be north south east west so uh, the, the first is the direction and it's not front back left right it's north south east and west um, we're going to do from a specific slot within the container so it's slot one in the container and then the quantity so um, how many we want to pull and then what slot number that you want to put in to, into this container so V is going to be the direction one is the slot from the container quantity is how many and then this slot is which slot within the turtle you're going to put it in. So when we get down to calling it, um, so here's the get fuel function, and we're going to call get container item. So with the get uh, fuel function, I'm just going getting fuel to letting you know currently this outputs to the terminal, so currently getting fuel. Um, so it checks the fuel level. Uh, versus the travel distance. If the current fuel level is less than travel distance, it's going to execute this piece of code. And this piece of code is um, get container item, which it, it calls a function get container item. So I'm specifying the side being the coal side, which is going to be the left side. Um, the fuel slot is slot 15. And the quantity is going to be one because it's a piece of coal. I just want one piece of coal, not a big deal. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the fuel slot, which is slot 15. Refuel means I'm going to use the piece of coal. And then I'm going to select slot one again and then return. And get saplings is similar. I'm using the get container, I'm using the sapling side, and then the sapling slot. So the side is going to be the right side. The sapling slot is slot 16 and then the quantity is going to be 4. And the reason you use functions so um, the reason I used I created a function um, get container item so if you're getting into programming or whatnot um, so many of you that already know programming know creating functions is the best way to do things but what happens is if there's a you write a piece of code that's going to be written over and over again you want to create a function because anytime you change that code you got to change it however many times you rewrote it so here I'm using it twice and I only had to write it once and I just call that function now um, if there's something wrong in this code I just have to change it in one spot and then um, we can move on plus it condenses your amount of code now, um, I do programming, well, I used to do programming for a living uh, where I worked, and there's a piece of code I was working on there that somebody had written it, and they didn't use any functions, everything was hard-coded, and the total amount of code was like 900 lines of code. 
Now what I did is I went through and I condensed a lot of that stuff using variables. Um, I'll talk about variables in a second too. Um, I was able to condense that code down to 300 lines of code um, just by using functions that repeat the same process over and over again so you don't have to type it out again. Now the reason you use variables is that um, if I have to change anything, say I, I need to change the travel distance. Um, say it's 18 now because I wanted to make it a little bigger. Um, uh, dirt quantity, what if I wanted more dirt? Um, fuel slot, I wanted to change the slots around. There's only one spot that I have to change it and it affects all of the code instead of just one code. Or like a uh, container chest, well I don't want to use a chest, I want to use um, a furnace. I tried using furnace that didn't quite work really well <laughs> um, because it only had one slot so I was like hey you know I only need one piece of coal um, but um, I think playing with it I'm I might be able to f add some more to it but that's why you use variables and that's why you use functions it's really good for code it cleans it up a lot um, so there's get container item get fuel uh, get saplings so replant saplings is pretty much just moving around doing a lot of moving so turn right turn right I'm making a u-turn move out to the planting place the dirt down um, then did I so yeah so I'm turning around I'm moving up one now I'm placing all the and then I'm moving back to start so not not too hard and then down here so um, here's an OS pull event now we're waiting for turtle inventory so if you look at the code the API says um, it has a whole list of there's about 12 or 15 of them types of OS pull events that you can wait for now turtle inventory uh, waits for the inventory to change but if you click on a blank spot it still registers as an inventory change so what you need to do is um, that's where I'm waiting for the dirt so I'm getting uh, item count from slot one which is this slot here and um, if it equals the dirt quantity that I specified then I'm doing all of these things now here's the sleep timer if you want to make it shorter if you don't like it you think it's too long um, you can play with that and figure it out uh, then you get fuel get sapling and then plant sapling moves around and that's pretty much where everything's at um, I guess I could have taken that out. You don't need that. That's fine. <laughs> it's already paste bin. But yeah, there you go. There's the code. Um, hope you like it. Hope you enjoy the script and hope you have fun making lots of fuel with um, with all the dyes. You got lots of coal too. You can do. Um, some stuff with that as well. You can make a um, solid field firebox and use um, coal from it. Use charcoal. There you go, guys. Take care and have a good one. Hope you enjoyed the script. Hope you enjoyed the uh, the farm. All right.